meeting to order. And just for the audience, uh, welcome to the uh, Board of Selectmen for the Town of Situate on Tuesday, November 2nd. Um, before we get started, obviously, this is this proceeding is being recorded by the town. I also see that it's also being recorded by Boston Globe. Uh, is there anybody else who's recording it? Okay. Good. So moving on, I'd like to um, call the meeting to order. And on our first uh, agenda item is the um, acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Okay. From Mr. Second. Harris, seconded by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, this is an amended uh, agenda. Um, still on uh, agenda item number two, I'd like to deal with the walk-in period. Is there anybody here for walk-in? Fair enough. Um, then I'd like to move on to agenda item number three. It's a discussion vote. Uh, one day wine and malt beverage license for St. Luke's Church Parish. And on behalf of the applicant, is there anybody here? Come on up, if you don't mind, to the uh, microphone, please. Are you Mr. I'm Christian, Christian Dietz, Dietz. Thank you. 54 Branch Street. And you're looking for a one-day uh, license um, for, um, if I got the date right, November 14th? That is correct. It's in, um, from 2 o'clock in the afternoon until 5. Correct. And it's a part of a request for Taste of Situate. You have an event that you're going to be having special foods from local restaurants. That is right. We and have 15 people or uh, 15 businesses that will be uh, have samples of their different foods and specialties and thought that uh, beer, wine, and obviously water and soft drinks would be a, a complement to that. And that's again November uh, 14th, 2010 at St. Luke's Episcopal Church, right on the corner of uh, 3A and uh, First Parish. For those people who are watching, giving you a little PR here. Thank you. Um, and um, from 2 to 5. Any questions from the board? Motion, Mr. Chairman? Please. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a one day wine and malt beverage license to St. Luke's Episcopal Church Parish Center, 465 First Parish Road for an event on Sunday, November 14, 2010, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank Good you. luck. Good luck. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number four. It's a discussion <coughs> vote for the authorization of Musquashka Pond. On behalf of the applicant, I see it's Mr. Kevin Cafferty. <coughs> Kevin? Hello. Briefly, you'd like to tell us what you're looking to do, which obviously we know, but for the audience. Yeah. Okay, this motion is for the Board of Selectmen to vote to authorize the town administrator to act on behalf of the board as its agent in filing applications for execution, executing agreements regarding and performing any and all actions necessary to secure um, the town of Sitch with such loans and our grants for construction or planning of water pollution abatement projects. It may be made available to the town of Situate. Basically, it's it's a housekeeping so that the town administrator can handle any signatures or anything for grants or applications. For loans or anything provided by DP for the Squash Department. Questions from the board? Mr. Vignani? Now, what is this different from <clears throat> typical projects? I, the, Trisha, if there's still a $20,000 or $25,000, anything above that has to come before the board? Yeah, you have to vote it. And this is, um, it's like the uh, water resources redevelopment plan and everything. The paperwork has to be turned around really quickly when it's submitted to us. So if you have to wait every time for you to and so and this is but just the is designated just for this specific project. Just this specific yeah. one. Great. And obviously for the award of the contract or anything like that, yeah. when that went out to bid, that would come back to the board. Great. Anybody Thank you. Else? Questions from the audience? And entertain a motion. Move the board move. Of, oh, go ahead. Move the board of selectmen vote to authorize the town administrator to act on behalf of the board as its agent in filing applications for executing agreements regarding and performing any and all actions necessary to secure for the town of Situate such loans and or grants for construction or planning of water pollution abatement projects as <coughs> as may be made available to the town of Situate pursuant to the provision of the Mass Clean Water Act. MGL section 21, chap chapter 21, section 27 through 33E, inclusive as amended. In the Water Pollution Abatement Revolving Loan Program, MGL chapter 29C, for the Musquashkit Pond Sewer and Water Main Project. 
contract 2010-22-01. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you, Kevin. Moving on to agenda item number five. It's a discussion vote for short-term borrowing uh, with our treasurer, collector, Jane Lopardo. Jane. Good evening. Good evening. Again, could you just briefly explain, I know you are here the last time, but just for the purposes of the audience, what are you looking to do with the short-term borrowing? Looks sure. Like um, this is a formal short-term bond anticipation note that I've done um, as a state house note through the town. Uh, saved us a couple thousand dollars on issuance costs by doing it that way. Um, the rate that we got with the net interest cost, I believe, is 0 0.70. Um, and it's in the total amount of $1,435,700. And it will mature in March when I do a bond issue for the town. It looks like um, these are for purposes of what you have um, at the end of our packet, which deals with the water flushing and also it looks like um, bucket truck, uh, school bus, infiltration inflow, the water main, and the fire command vehicle. Mm -hmm. what this, these are all for. Uh, right, and then the um, some money for the library, the forty-five thousand for them. Just that one. Yep, the yep. library study. Yep, mm -hmm. mostly yeah. water. And the liquid pre-salt treatment system. All mm -hmm. right. Questions from the board, Mr. Vignani? Just a, a quick question, Jane. These are all the transfers that you come to us over the last year and wanted the early money where we're borrowing from ourselves. Uh, right, this just in this fiscal year because right. they have to be cleaned up by June thirtieth. However, intentionally I did not include the roses lanes um, into fund advance borrowing because. I've been going through this long process with the MWPAT, and I just didn't want to jeopardize that. That will be cleaned up in February um, prior to me issuing the bond. And we'll be doing some new debt with the MWPAT on that. Right. It's, it's a relatively small number, right. a million and a half, yeah. and it's for a relatively small, uh, shorter period of time, just yeah. till March. Do we have to do it? Um, well, the reason why I did it is because I also did not include the school money that you just did the <coughs> into fund on for sixty thousand dollars two weeks ago when I was here. They're going to be needing a few hundred thousand dollars, um, and Kevin may need some additional money. So I want to clean up these to make room because we're borrowing against a stabilization fund. We only have two point two million, I think, in there. So I was getting too close. Okay. So that's why. Makes sense. On a motion. Motion for chairman, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to support the request of the Treasurer Collector for short-term borrowing in the amount of $1,435,700. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Jane, thank you. All right. Moving on to agenda item number six. It's a discussion. Vote to amend an entertainment license at the Inn at Situate Harbor. And on behalf of the applicants, if you could come forward. Just for purposes, um, I'm recusing myself to, uh, in its situation. It's a former client of mine, so I'll, I'll step down. Thank you, gentlemen. Hi, Lynn. How are you? Good. How are you? We have uh, we have the uh, application in front of us. Why don't you just give briefly, just give us a, a reason why, I guess, that you're here to request a change. Sure. Well, we, um, as you know, we, we opened last June, and we've done uh, some changes down there and kind of changed the look and the feel. We've added some sofas and things like that, and just um, adding just some fun things for people to do. We've got some board games down there. It's a pretty casual, quiet place, but we are looking to add, um, you know, entertainment on Friday and Saturday. And tomorrow night we're doing a trivia night with Al Kozlowski. So, you know, we <laughs> we're just trying to add a few things. Nine o'clock's just a bit restrictive. Um, it, it's, you know, it's early for people to get there, and um, uh, and when you you know you have we're doing acoustic music. It's not not that we wouldn't want Aerosmith to come in and have a drink, but you know there's certainly not going to be a band that's going to be booked at our bar. So it's just it's quiet, nice, easy listening um, music, and it's inside, and you know you book for three hours, so it's book from six to nine. People aren't even home at that point, so. Um, just to help out the business <coughs> and, and just make it more attractive venue. And we need we need to be aware also that it's an inn. Our guests are above us, so the last thing we want to do is uh, make it uh, uh, uncomfortable for our guests that are that are yep. paying to stay at. Right. Night. So it's not like we want to push the envelope. On no. 
Well, I think the biggest concern last time was the outside portion of it, not the inside portion. Mm -hmm. I happened to be there last weekend, and it, it looks great for anyone watching. It's, it's really quaint, and it's so comfortable, and there's, uh, you know, like you said, the sofa's all over the place, and it's yeah. a real casual atmosphere, yeah. beautiful bar, um, and it, it is quiet. You know, there, there was an acoustic, I don't remember who was playing that evening, but there was mm -hmm. a player there, and it's not loud or intrusive at all. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that... Uh, I think that it fits in nicely, and I think the big concern last time is if you put it on that patio, that it would affect the neighbors. Yeah, and stuff, this so. is inside, yeah. so and 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 like they're actually not even by the door. The, no, I think they're they play on the back they're wall. They're inside, so like on the inside wall. John, you want to uh, go from nine to twelve? Would yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, I guess that would be, but I don't. For practical purposes, I don't see us ever playing till 12, but... Um, just in case it's there in case... Just it's there in case we... I mean, we have, you know, next year we've sold out our entire inn to a couple of weddings. If they wanted to have something till 11, we would want to have that opportunity. But certainly, there's <coughs> guest rooms right above this, this area, and, um, and our priority is to them, so... Is there a precedent in 10? What, what are the other entertainment license? Are they past 11? One well, motion? Okay. Just, just, one, just one question. Uh, on the motion, it says seven days a week. You mentioned Friday and Saturday. Right. Um, actually, the, the, um, the facility is open Wednesday through Sunday, so I guess it would be more Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, Monday and Tuesdays were not open, but we may book a Christmas party or something on a Monday night, you know, so we would want the opportunity to be able to use it then. So you're looking for seven days or Monday on Wednesday through? Uh, seven days. Seven days, okay. The only th question I have, and I'm certainly going to vote for it, we run into a problem, and it doesn't sometimes doesn't appear obvious, but if we vote this tonight and down the road the establishment, not necessarily the but the establishment changes hands and goes from one owner to another, mm -hmm. and the, the new owners don't have the same concern that the former owners have, it's very difficult for us to change that license. You know, that's just something to keep in mind to the board and, and, and uh Do you think we should put acoustic in here? That would remain the same, wouldn't it? What they have now, right? Not unless we put it in the motion. Right now it's a, I mean the way the motion reads now, it's a in, it's a mo it's a motion for any type of entertainment. It's not limited to the number? I mean like you just said, no, you don't want not, five it's not, it's not limited to the number now. But if we make it acoustic it limits it to the type of music. No one's going to, I don't think, come down and check by any means on every night, but it, it eliminates the big band sound. Mm -hmm. like they said, but if oh, it's they'll, inside, they'll they, it wouldn't bother anybody outside, and if it isn't bothering people, it's going to bother our guests before yeah. anybody, which... Yeah. I'm just bringing this concern yeah. up. That's no, all. I know. Yep, I understand. I'm just bringing this concern up. But when we do it, we're giving a full, like a, a full uh, entertainment license, so... And they got to come before us every year, though, so if... Yep. There's any complaints? So Not for that, I don't think. Do they? Back us <laughs> off next year if we <laughs> misbehave. <laughs> Fine. Motion. Sure. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to amend the entertainment license held by the Inn at Situate Harbor, 7 Beaver Dam Road, to extend the hours of indoor entertainment only until 12 o'clock midnight, seven days a week. Second. Motion to be made and second with further discussion from the floor. Board. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Good luck. Have a good See night. You. Good luck. Uh, John will be coming in in a second, I imagine, but this is the, the next item, uh, agenda item number 6A is for a amended time frame for the Hawker Pedal license for not such with farmers backing. How are you? Thanksgiving, the week before Thanksgiving. Could you just identify yourself for the, oh, sorry. For the record? That's Jessica okay. Lane. Thank you, Jessica. So you're looking to extend through or to Thanksgiving? Um, or? I guess through three weeks, just in case, weather, depending on the weather, but um, just if we have that opportunity to be here. Okay. You, you want to say hello to December 1st? Sure. Questions from the board? How's it going? Obviously yeah, good. Great. Good. Glad to hear it. Still good turnouts. The weather's been good yeah, so far. Down. So it's slowed down a little. I mean, the market season, all of my markets that I do have slowed down this time of year. But it's, it's okay. still good. 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 Motion? Go ahead. Please. Move the board second vote to grant the request of the Citro Community Farmers Artisans Market 
to extend the hawker peddler's license end date from October 31st to December 1st on Wednesdays from 3 to 7 p.m. for the following licensees. Dighton Farm, Lane's Lobsters, Harvest Food Club, Sticks and Stones to Dine For, <coughs> Baking for Joy, Great Cape Baking, Ralph Young, Sorrenta Chocolate, Peter uh, to Road, and Jenna Cakes. Second. Lo locations in the commuter rail parking lot in front of the WPA building. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Oh, I think at some point I did mention we're going to have, have you come back yep. just to discuss um, the year. I don't know. I just think there's a set date. Good. Um, Good. Just to give you a heads up. Thank you. All right, moving on to the next agenda item, number seven, a discussion vote. Revisions to the Economic Development Commission Memorandum. Mr. Monger, thank you very much for coming, member for of the me. Planning Board. And um, thank you for the uh, memorandum that we've had and had a chance to look at. Um, questions at all from the Board? Obviously, we want to put this in motion. We're excited about it, as I'm sure the Planning Board, yeah, I know you are. we're definitely excited about it. And we just, uh, we incorporated the suggestions of the selectmen at mm -hmm. prior meeting we attended, and then also the town administrator. And um, I think we're ready to go. So um, hoping to get this approved tonight. And this becomes sort of the charge of the commission going forward. Um, and then also, we'd ask that you also, if you look at the steps for reestablishment in Section D, um, you've already done the first, well, You've already voted to reconstitute the Economic Development Commission at your last meeting. Um, we'd ask that you um, vote to adopt the recommendations of this memorandum, and this becomes the charge of the commission. And then finally, um, if you look at Section D2, um, we'd ask that you vote to authorize the Planning Board to go ahead and start the process of advertising for members and pre-screening applications and all of that, and then our plan would be to bring all those back to the selectmen, give you our recommendations. You're certainly free to uh, take our recommendations or not and do as you see fit, but uh, we'd like to help the process along that way. Questions? No. A quick comment. I, I think it's a great document. It really is. I like, I especially like the fact that it really lays out what the committee's going to do step by step by step. You know, look for federal guard, do a survey, inventory this, look at public meetings and all this sort of stuff. So it's, it's really good. Um, the one question I had was in the screening process that you just mentioned. Yes. Um, I just wanted to make sure when you screen them that we're still going to get all of the applicants. Yes. You know, and you'll, you'll say, you know, here's the 20 applicants, here are the five, you know, here's our ranking of the top whatever right. uh, based on whatever rationale, but just so that we see the full boat of... Uh, of people that are, are interested. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. We'll forward all the applications along with our recommendations. Um, and one other, I, I guess, point on uh, D2, I'd ask that uh, when we initially drafted the memo, we said that we'd have this task completed by the end of this year. That might be a push. <laughs> we'll try for it, but <laughs> Fiscal, right? we'd like that piece stricken from the memo, <laughs> I guess, um, that we will just uh, accomplish this task promptly after authorization. Um, we're certainly going to advertise and get going on it right away, but. Um, the way things go, you never know. I know the uh, the Pier 44 uh, process, I think, went fantastic. And we imagine a lot of the people that either didn't make it on that committee or made it on that committee would also be great candidates for this committee. Um, so I hope a lot of people turn out and apply. We're looking for uh, seven good members with hopefully economic development backgrounds, business development backgrounds, um, any special skills, uh, grant writing, uh, government relations, anything at all like that. So. Well, I just have to say I want to thank you, Dan, and also uh, Bill Limbacher and, and your board as a whole. This was a, it's a great document. I know I talked to you earlier about it, and you came up with this idea, and it's, it's going to hopefully be very uh, successful for the town. I think it will be, and it's something the town's been looking at. So I commend you both and uh, your, your board. So well, thank, thank you. you. We appreciate your help and support and your comments, and um, we hope this is a great long-term uh, commission for the town and it does some great things over time. Any motion. questions from the audience? No? Okay. Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to support a memorandum titled mm -hmm. Formation of an Economic Development Commission dated September 30th, 2010. With, Second. Should I put with that one, with the one change in terms of the time frame? Yes. To remove at the end of this year and do as soon as possible. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Dan, thank you. Bill, thank you. And then I guess uh, technically um, 
we should probably have you vote on D2 as well to authorize the planning board to move forward with the um, uh, advertising and uh, screening applicants. Move that the Board of Selectmen authorize the planning board to start um, the application process. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Great. Thank you very much. Should we? Thank you very much, Dan. All right, moving on to the next one, which is agenda item number eight. It's a presentation, discussion, hazard mitigation plan, MAPC, and planning board. And act, actually, I apologize. It's going to be postponed until November 16th. That's what happens when you don't read your notes. Uh, so that one's scratched, folks. But let's move on to agenda item number nine, which is a discussion vote for the uh, potential lease of land at Wampatuck School. And this is uh, an issue that <coughs> I asked to bring before the board. And in essence, um, I'd asked, sent a letter over to um, chairman of the um, uh, school committee, uh, Michael Hayes, inquiring whether or not uh, the school committee would be receptive to um, leasing out land um, for the purposes of um, cell tower. Uh, and the school committee has indicated in a letter dated October 19th, 2010, that um, the school, um, uh, that, that, uh, that Mr. Hayes has uh, polled the entire school committee to see if there is an interest, and there is. So I think officially we need to ask the school committee, are they interested in doing just that? Um, so that um, if that's the case, I know um, from a town perspective, uh, I'm certainly in favor of taking a look at that as an option to um, see if that's a location for a cell tower in order to generate revenue that would benefit the schools. And um, I wanted to bring it to the board for any discussion to see what the thoughts were. Just, if I may, I think uh, I, I'm reading it this way, John, that by Mike's letter to us, they're indicating that they don't have a problem with it. All right? And, and we're, I guess the next decision is, is more ours than theirs. Am I, am I right or wrong? I mean, what, what, I guess what are we going to gain by sending it back to the school committee if they've right. already? I, I see what you're saying. No, I think I think it's it's implicit that they are receptive to doing yeah. it. Yeah. So the next step is what? Um, I would say that. Um, it's to the ZBA, right? We would then say that that's an option for the town. The town's willing to uh, have as an option for uh, an alternate site. Sean, you had a question. I was just going to say, other than the fact that did bring more attention to it. I mean, the more people talking about it, the better, I think. You know, obviously it's going to be all the parents of any school, you know, in this case, you know, Wampatuck. Joe's right. They are putting it back, you know, giving it back to us. But I think the more discussion, the better. So, so, so like, I mean, I'm, I'm open yeah, to no, I'm, well, I'm that's just, just wondering what the next step is. is but I, I think the only... The only things that we have to bring to people's attention is um, the one concern in the letter was the health issue. Yep. Um, if there's a health concern with um, a cell tower, we don't want it anywhere. So we don't want it on Wampatuck. We don't want it on Tilden. We don't want it, you know, on the police station. Um, the um, other reason why this is being pursued is the, the revenue will come to the town instead of going to a private property owner if we ended up putting it on town property. Um, you know, I don't think we're qualified to say whether it can go on that spot or not go on that spot. That's that's a ZBA thing. Um, you know, hopefully by getting this out there, we'll get some feedback from the public, like Sean's saying, and and vet it through the process that the ZBA is running to see where it goes. I don't even know if if um, AT and T wants it there. Yeah. You know, it's just there was a list of a dozen or eight or ten properties that we sent to them at some point in time, and. Uh, I think this was one of them, so I think it's it's kind of an AT&T's court to say is this viable and and have the ZBA go through the process of and just so that this is the number one spot that they're looking it for. It is, yeah, Wampatuck. It's, it's Wampatuck is, is so that's where um, it's not an arbitrary. Let's just pick the school, but it's a town property that we can generate uh, revenue that could certainly be of, of of help. Obviously, with the caveat that there's no health issue. I mean, that's that goes without saying, and I'm glad you raised it. But I think, you know, certainly at this point, it's certainly an alternative that we can certainly raise and say, here you go, here's a site, and certainly if uh, there's an ability for the town to generate money, great. I think I read 
today in an email that, uh, believe it or not, health issues uh, cannot be a yeah. a reason to to turn down a cell tower, as crazy as that may seem. Uh, and it was suggested that uh, in the email, if I remember correctly, that the town somewhere during this process hire a an expert on these matters to, to, to look. I think it's AT and T hire them. Have AT and T hire them to to come back and assure us that, especially where the area is a school and uh, so heavily populated, that there isn't any health issues. So I just bring that up to something that I think should ha should absolutely be done, uh, and they should pay for it to assure us uh, that this isn't an issue. John, just to be clear, the AT and T said this was a suitable site right mm -hmm. from the beginning. What would this do to any private individual if they were, you know, in a suitable site? Well, I would assume any agreements that AT&T has now with the homeowners up to the Anything else on that then? All right, and um, I guess as we go forward then, we'd like to at least be able to send to, um, should we send a, uh, a, a notice to the, a letter to the ZBA then? I would say so. This is a site that the town is willing to certainly pursue at this point and uh, obviously um, let them be notice, aware of it uh, for their upcoming meeting that they're having later this month, I guess. Good, all right. Any questions from the audience? Saying none, I'd like to move on to the next discussion point, which happens to be agenda item number 10, discussion vote, special town meeting articles, and this in particular is article 20, which is the uh, petition article on the Community Preservation Act. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, at the last meeting, we asked for a, a uh, something from, uh, from the town moderator indicating whether this could be amended or not. Uh, I meant it down, I guess, or reduced rather than eliminated. Did we get an answer on that? Yes, we did, actually. Um, after uh, a few uh, emails, we were finally able to get a uh, uh, decision by the moderator, Rich Bowen, on Monday indicating that um, anybody is um, free to um, amend this article, uh, even on town floor if they so choose, and if they're looking to reduce uh, the amount, um, which was discussed before at our meeting, it could be done. So um, the town moderator would not find that to be um, um, out of bounds, for lack of terminology, out of the scope, of, the scope <coughs> of the article itself. Sean? But that's not what we're voting here tonight. We're voting the way it was written, yeah. the way it was presented. Mm -hmm. Right. I think and just, oh, go ahead. Good, I mean, you. just to clarify, we're, we're not voting whether it should be there or not be there. It's there. It's a, 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 a citizen's petition, and we're just giving our opinion and we don't even have to agree um, because of the, the, the elected officials that we are. Um, obviously, this is the, um, a very sensitive case. I actually wish Mr. Paley was here um, so that we could have a discussion with him, but, and typically he is here, so I, don't, I hope he's okay. Um, but um, it's been written up in the paper, and, it's been, uh, um, and some things have been said that I wanted to try and cl clarify. I guess I will without him here real quickly. Um, there's kind of an undertone that there's a um, that there's uh, some hidden agenda in in CPC and, and the board's opinion on it and and um, I, I guess I have to clarify the fact that that couldn't be farther from the case. You know, all of us here run for this elected official and we do what we think is for the best interest of the town. There's no uh, uh, special interest and there's no agenda here uh, behind our decisions or our opinions on things. We all have our individual opinions and we do the best that we can. Um, you know, a lot of people think, and, and it's actually written in the article here, that, uh, um, you know, the person that wrote the, the article, Mr. Paley, is involved with an, uh, um, a group that wants to limit taxation. You know, that's, it says it right there in the paper. So his goal is to limit, limit taxation. And by reducing CPC, that's limiting your taxation. 
Um, our goals may be different than Mr. Paley's in this. Our goal is to do what we think is in the best interest of the town, and that may not be his goal, um, nor is it his, uh, what he's signed up to do. That's what we have signed up to do. Um, so in, in doing this, um, you know, what I did, and I'm sure all of you did, is I put a pluses and a minuses, and I went through what I thought were good and bad things about this. And I understand the validity of it. I understand the thought process of it. I think, it's, I think it has some merit. There are some positive things about it. You know, it, it's potentially money that could subsidize um, an override. You know, and that's the way that Mr. Paley is kind of pitching it, that you would reduce CPC and, and put the money into an override that would help the operating budget for the town and the school. Um, another positive thing is there's a, um, you know, these are tough economical times, so um, people are, are um, hurting, and, and this will be a way to kind of push money around. I get that. Um, and another positive thing is there is some money in CPC. There's about $3 million, I think, in the reserve there, so that CPC would be able to function at some level for some period of time. You know, those are the positive things that I could find out from, from supporting this article. Um, unfortunately, there were a lot of negative sides, and I'll run through my list real quick. Um, the, first thing, the first thing that I have the biggest concern of is, is that the two things are completely separate. Um, just because you lower CPC doesn't mean you get an override. They're mutually exclusive. And um, by, by pitching it that way but not presenting it that way is a problem for me. I think by, by saying in the special town meeting that we're going to be reducing CPC on the hopes of at the annual town meeting passing an override, well, an override isn't even in place. We don't even know if there's going to be one. We don't know if there's going to be a group that puts one together. We don't even know what the number is. So to ask people to reduce CPC now over some override number in the future, I don't think makes a lot of sense to me. What if the override is less than the reduction of CPC? You know, some people may say I'd reduce CPC to match the override, but what if the override is 400,000 and CPC is a million? Then people don't know how to vote. Um, I think that, uh, again, people don't have the total financial picture. Um, second point is, again, the override is not, it has to pass in order for this kind of plan to work, and that's not a given. That's not a given in this town. We've talked about that a lot. Um, another point is, a negative point is, for every dollar that we think is going to go to the override, well, we're going to lose at least a dollar thirty that will go to CPC. Um, we've gotten as much as a hundred percent match from CPC, and the fact it's down to like twenty-eight or thirty percent now, I think there's litigation in place that is trying to get it up to as much as seventy-five percent. So that's a that's not a dollar for dollar switch. Um, I believe that if we reduce CPC, that there's always going to be a budget need for that money, especially in the upcoming years. And I believe that it's going to be very difficult to reinstate it. Um, so I think if you give it up, it's going to be very, very difficult to get it back. Um, I don't support revoking it. I think that there are costs associated with closing it, and there's costs associated with reopening if you want to. I, I think revoking it is is uh, not the right thing to do. If, if somehow um, you wanted to reduce it to a smaller number, that may be something that is different. But the way it's written now, I don't think revoking it is the right thing to do. Um, the, last, um, the last point th that I have to make is um, I, I think that we're, we've got to remember that CPC has done a ton of projects in town, and it adds value to the town. Now, whether it's something that you as an individual use you know, you may not go to the Maritime Center, you may not walk on Gannett Road, you may not play basketball on the outside courts, you may not visit the historical um, sites in town, you know, you may not go to Flannery Field, but all of these things that CPC has done over the last several years add value to our town. Um, they have a positive impact and they have a, um, a, a positive uh, uh, boost to the um, value of living in situate. And I think I don't think that those things are ever going to be able to be funded in the budget itself in the upcoming years. So if you remove this, I think in the long term, you know, not to mention the, you know, I didn't even mention probably the most important things, affordable housing, water resources. These are things that are valuable to them that really aren't um, kind of extra things. Those are, are pertinent things that are funded through CPC. If you get rid of that stuff, the town's not going to be able to fund it in their budget, and it's going to hurt the town in the long run. So this is my long-winded way of saying, after looking at this, I do not support 
this motion um, at this point in time. I think there's a lot of stuff that has to be done, and I don't even know if I support it at a later time, but specifically at this special town meeting, um, I do not think it's the right thing to do for the town. Mr. Norton, thank you. Uh, I, I will not repeat uh, Tony's uh, list by any means, except to say that that uh, everything that he mentioned, I think, is, is right on. Uh, this is uh, a vote tonight to either vote it up or down. I think we thoroughly discussed this at the last meeting, and the feeling of the board, I think, at the last meeting was that if it was possible to to reduce it somehow, that would be an option, but uh, that we were not in favor of, of, of eliminating CPC. Uh, our, our motives all along were nothing but uh, honorable, if I can put it that way, although misunderstood by some people, uh, that's fine. Uh, and I also agree that tonight, that when it comes to voting this up or down tonight, uh, I will be voting it uh, not to support it. I think I made myself pretty clear two weeks ago. I might not have been in favor of everything that the committee has done, probably for the money that they've spent on certain things. But I have to say, in about 15 seconds, the pros outweigh the cons. I didn't think there would be so much discussion in the last month over something like this. When Norman first mentioned it, and I think it was at a Council on Aging meeting, I thought it was a, a good idea. Well, since then, Recreation, Council on Aging, all the different committees that, I, uh, that we go to as liaison positions, so many people have said how good it's done for the town. And like you said, Tony, you touched on it. I think this is, things like this make this town what it is. So. Call, call me a flip-flop, whatever. When it, in the beginning, it sounded like a good idea. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's not such a good idea. That's, that's it. You're not flip-flopping. You're, you're evaluating. Well, I'm, uh, you're you listen, you listen to people in the last month or so around town. I guess that's what it is. So that's, you know, sorry for jumping in. You know, that's the good thing about maybe not voting something right away when we're here on, you know, when it's first presented. Because you all of us travel around town and listening to different thoughts and so forth. So, like, and again, Tony said, you know, do we do what's in the best interest of the whole town? You know, I commend the board members, and I'll tell you this. Um, you could have made a decision on short shrift. You could have come up here and said, I'm going to agree to do this or I'm going to agree not to do it. But all of you have looked at this issue over and over again to try to figure out the positives and the negatives, as articulated by Tony, and I commend you all for it. Um, my only two words to everything is, I concur. And I think that says it all. So uh, any discussion from the audience? Mo motion, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bowman, if it's anything otherwise. Uh, I just want to be very brief. And you have to come up here to the uh, mic. John Bowman, 7204 Road. I just wanted to thank the board and affirm everything that, uh, I mean, Tony's analysis was basically spot on with everything. I, I really have nothing to add other than I think it's important to our future. The board has supported CPA and the projects in the past. You know, whether or not everybody's loved every project, I don't question the board's motives at all, and, and nobody on the CPC does. So we've enjoyed the support of this board, and I think it's been a, a very fair analysis. Obviously, uh, I oppose Article 20 personally as a taxpayer, and so I, I, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Motion? M motion. Please, Mr. Norton. Move the Board of Selectmen vote not to support Article 20 of the Special Town Meeting. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. That was very good. Um, moving on to agenda item number 11, which is the uh, final preparations for a November 3rd informational meeting and Special Town Meeting. Folks, that's going to be tomorrow night, just so that you understand. And I believe it is at the high school auditorium. So again, tomorrow night. Uh, in addition to going through this final preparation for those members and the audience who would like to come and discuss those articles um, and um, informational, um, it will be tomorrow night at the high school. But since we're on agenda item number 11, um, Tricia, I think you pretty much gave to us basically what an overview, overview um, um, 
what do you call it, a um, PowerPoint. Say PowerPoint. <coughs> the old terminology would be a slideshow, but a PowerPoint presentation for tomorrow. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add? as well. Um, the school will be doing a presentation about 20 minutes on the school projected budget and their challenges. I will be doing one on behalf of the town. I think Kim gave you the final reiteration. I have to thank you, Tony. After looking at something for like 10 days, how I could have missed <laughs> health insurance. So many people looked at this. So thank you for doing that. Um, so it's ready to go. And um, I you know, one of the things is this part wasn't difficult, but in order to plug the numbers into what folks are going to get tomorrow night, we had to do our huge revenue and assumption forecasting that we do with the financial team and make a lot of judgments and assumptions about revenues in order to come up with the projected deficit. And um, the one thing we hope folks just take away tomorrow night is um, that it's this point in time it's really just a snapshot of where we are in November and this budget we won't live with until July of next year um, there will be a moderator between Tony and Bob DiLorenzo the Advisory Committee uh, for folks to ask questions um, because we also want um, this to be an opportunity for folks to ask questions in a general manner about town meeting next Monday night we have 21 Warren articles you have the final uh, supplemental information that I prepared, most of which um, nicely appears in the advisory committee report, and you also have your motions. We have a moderators meeting tomorrow, so hopefully um, everything's in place for That's the third and the eighth. Five thirty, right? The moderators meeting. Three thirty. Three thirty. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions at all? I, I just want to point one thing out that the the meeting for tomorrow night isn't. You know, we're trying to stay on track and deal with um, two or three specific issues. The group has met since July. July, I think. So this group has gotten together for several times, and we're trying to find the answers to frequently asked questions so that when people ask about the GIC or, um, you know, closing a school, that we, that we kind of have those. I think from these meetings what we're going to do is probably generate a whole other list of questions, and then, you know, then we'll work on those questions to, to see where we had there and deal with fiscal year 12. But as Trisha said, we're, we're going to deal with kind of going over the Warren articles. We're going to deal with where we are in fiscal year 2011 and what we think fiscal year 2012 is going to look like. That's, the, that's what the topic of the meeting is. We're not going to talk about Pier 44. We're not talking about cell towers. We're not talking about, uh, um, you know, plowing streets. Those are, those are the three things that we're going to talk about at that meeting. And we hope we get a good turnout. We're in the auditorium, so there'll be plenty of room. And uh, we'd like to have some discussion on a lot of the topics and um, get as many people involved as possible. Good. All right. Moving on to agenda item uh, number 12, <coughs> which is the report of the town administrator. Patricia. Thank you. Um, the first item in the packet is uh, twofold on the financial trend monitoring. It gives you a year end closure for 12 full months of FY11. <laughs> I mean, excuse me, FY10, and then does the first quarter of FY11 for you as well to see how now they compared uh, revenues to expenditures um, <coughs> to FY9 to FY10, FY10 to FY11. Um, again, areas of note that I've highlighted in the narrative uh, for year-end FY10 is, uh, continues to be fire overtime. Um, the overtime expenses for the first quarter of FY11 are down considerably over the same period for FY10. There's a Warren article on the special town meeting war uh, warrant to appropriate more money into fire overtime. However, um, rather than sort of spending, adding, spending, adding, um, we uh, have a staffing and operation study being undertaken in the fire department right now and expect to have that report um, by the end of next month to sort of help us better grasp 
you know, to a certain extent, overtime is uncontrollable, so it's very hard to sort of project with accuracy. There are some fixed costs we know, um, but I think since it's a, such a large budget item, um, some scrutiny of it um, was definitely in order. Um, unemployment and gas was very good. We were under expense for FY10, and um, FY11 unemployment is sort of a question mark again for FY10. We seem to be within um, projections for the first quarter, and August is, is, is our biggest month of the year. Um, the second part of the report uh, talks about our FY12 budget and capital planning process. Our annual cycle began um, last month with the distribution of the capital planning instructions and forms. There will be a little different process for that, which I'll talk with the board about at its meeting on the 16th when you uh, adopt the budget timetable. Um, <coughs> and uh, budget instructions go out to department heads Thursday. On November 16th and 17th, I'll be meeting with all the department heads for a mid-year review of their FY10, FY11 goals and objectives because they have to start planning for their FY12 goals and objectives which need to be submitted when their budgets are due. Um, a little conversation about the November 3rd meeting in preparation for um, the November 8th special town meeting, which has sort of been some unexpected volume of work in our offices the past week. So everybody's um, um, cowboyed up, as they said, and, and done what needed to be done. Um, our FY09 audit is finally in hand. That's available. I think I gave copies for the board to review at some point. I'd like to talk with you individually about what's in that. And um, the FY10 audit is being done right now. You probably saw some of the auditors here um, when you came in. The last piece is Pier 44. And I, I want to take just a little min minute to talk about that since the board um, appointed the committee a couple of meetings ago and nothing's happened. That's partially because of the special town meeting November 8th. Um, it's largely because I'm sure the committee members want to see the building uh, before and as soon as they start meeting. And over the past few months, we've taken three dumpsters worth of debris out of that. The building was left in pretty deplorable condition, not structurally, but physically by the former tenants. And it had been in there for about a year and a half. So. Um, because we are a public entity, and that is now a public building, and we must safeguard taxpayer dollars, if there was anything worth any value left in that building that had a value of $25 or more, um, we need to make an attempt to dispose of it. So um, that all happened on every item that was still there. Three dumpsters of debris were taken out. The rest of the items were tagged. Department heads and the school department are going Friday morning to obtain any of that equipment or surplus that they may be able to use for their departments. And then a sealed bid invitation is going out to restaurants uh, in town. We have a list of every restaurant and food established in town as well as in the newspaper to come for two viewings to see the kitchen equipment. And they will have sealed bids on the equipment, uh, kitchen equipment. And then um, we'll have the carpets need to be cleaned. They actually need to be taken up, but they need to be cleaned. We were down there today um, looking at gas issues. We have to put some minimum heat in the building now that winter is coming. There's no heat in the building right now. Um, and, and we will get that building ready for meeting space. Um, I think people would be surprised to find out that it's in very good condition other than being filthy. Um, and uh, would like to, to open it up for meeting space um, as soon as we can, hopefully after the first of the year. But our goal right now is to schedule a meeting for the committee, um, hopefully before <coughs> the this month, and get them for a walkthrough of the building that they can do safely. Any questions, Sean? Tricia, can I just ask you, um, you, you went through the kitchen, did you ask anybody <coughs> with any restaurant experience? Because I've there are auctioneers that specialize in just that stuff. The challenge with the kitchen, and we, we talked about a lot of this this morning and probably finalized it, is um, the restaurant was closed very quickly. And all of the kitchen <coughs> equipment is filthy. 
and we're not in a position <coughs> to determine what workable condition it's in. And in terms of the time and effort for the town to go through the process of doing that by testing it, cleaning it, wasn't worth just having people come in, look at it themselves, make a bid. The town makes no representations, warranties, or assertions about the equipment at all. Usually you right. don't. And then they're responsible for removing it. Um, a lot of the equipment is um, not, well, it's not new. And, um, you know, it's, it's sort of by a beware caveat I'm to it. But we did talk about that today, Sean, and decided for what it would in cost of the town's money to get the, con the equipment working and then have an auctioneer come in is just, we want to clean Not it worth out. It. Yeah. Okay. W at what point do you say you want to keep something before this group hasn't gone in to say, you know, there might be, might be more valuable to us to leave, and I've never even stepped foot in that kitchen, you know, leave some of that equipment for future use that, you know, this committee might seem that more value to us than it is what you're going to get on, you know. Well, that's a possibility. I mean, I'm not in a position to make that determination. I know the school has already indicated an interest in the walk-in freezer that's there, and certainly we have first priority in our departments in the school for anything that's there. Um, then you raise other issues about storage or whatever. I mean, the kitchen, as you know, I don't know if you know, it's huge. It's um, it's as big again as the main dining area. There are three separate corridors that are a kitchen. One is a walk-in freezer the entire length of the front of the building, um, which is essentially, if it's not ever, you know, sp space that would have to be retrofitted. And then there's two huge corridors of prep space with additional storage upstairs um, with warming ovens and things like that. Um, but again, um, the return that we'll probably get on the sealed bid because of the way it was left in the condition it's in, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not expecting a windfall. Just a question. Do we have any, like, and this may go to John, our uh, television person, do we have any equipment that can be actually brought down if there's going to be meeting space down there to be able to televise from that location for different things? Um, I don't know. If there was, there's probably cable into the bar. So it's a, it's a possibility that we can, you know, the committee can look at and we can look at. Just a thought. Well, you, you can do it like the school committee, too. Don't do it live, but do it, then yeah. tape it. Tape it. Okay. Just a thought. Any other questions? I, the only thing that struck me is I know you invited the, the local restaurants, and I think that's great, but they may not need stuff. Usually it's startups that are looking for that sort of stuff. So I don't know if we want to, you know, maybe give them a first shot, but then expand it. You know. um, it has to be advertised in the newspaper, <coughs> but um, the way the procurement law works for surplus equipment is that if the value is under $5,000, we don't even have, we can do whatever we want. I mean, we don't even ostensibly have to advertise, but, um, you know, we'll certainly have it in the Mariner and the website, and, um, you know, by talking about this, too, people will know. Um, but, you know, obviously we want to let businesses in town know about it, but if they know someone who knows someone, but we can't sort of leaflet the, right. the yellow pages, as it were, so. Well, good. That sounds very good, Patricia. I appreciate that. Um, moving on to agenda item number 13, other business. Any other business? No. Well, we, a quick thing, went to the fireman's ball. In fact, uh, Joe, John, and I were all there. Great event. Um, good to see the firefighters out there and meet them and see them kind of uh, um, kick off their know, boots. Kick off the boots and have some fun. Uh, great event. The Barker always throws a great, a great event. So I want to um, give kudos to them. Um, and then just a little um, fall football news. Um, the high school football team's doing great. Get out there and see a game. They've been away for the last three or four weeks, and all of the youth programs are now in the playoffs now. So there'll be some great. Um, games here for three dollars you can get in there and see third grade fifth grade seventh grade or fourth grade sixth grade and eighth grades play games out there and go out and support your uh, your teams i think all the teams made the playoffs so there's uh, some good stuff going on here uh the only thing i was going to say is i was going to commend the uh, merchants and uh for halloween and front street it was a phenomenal event it is every year it's it's one of the special things this town has um, there are many things, but this one in particular, and seeing the kids downtown and the parents and their costumes, it's, it's quite, a, it's quite a, an event that it makes you feel like you, you're very proud about 
being a part of the town. And um, so I commend all the merchants for participating. That's a cost that they actually incur. Um, they pay for the thousands of candy bars and candies and everything else they hand out. But, you know, um, everybody should be happy about it. And um, outside of that, um, I have nothing else. No. We, uh, John, I was just writing the, the election is going on, obviously, this evening. You've got you five, five more minutes, minutes to vote. If you haven't <laughs> voted and it's, uh, I was there just before the meeting, a great turnout. I guess a 50% turnout at about 3 o'clock this afternoon. So um, thank you for getting out there and voting. Moving on to our correspondence. I think there's one thing here. Agenda item number 14. Want me to read that? Do you mind? No. Nope. There's a press release um, regarding the seasonal uh, flu clinics. So the, uh, the public health nurse um, will conduct the seasonal flu and pneumonia clinics at the following locations in October, well, that's gone, um, in November of 2010. So at St. Mary's Parish on Wednesday, November 17th, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., if your name, last name is from A to G, and 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. if your last name is from H to M, and then the following day, the 18th, Thursday, um, if your last name is from N to S, it'll be 10 to 11 a.m., and if your last name is T to Z, um, from 1 to 2 p.m. So 17th and 18th, St. Mary's Parish. If you get the letters wrong, I'm sure they'll still help you. Um, and then there's another one on Central Park um, on November 24th from 10 to 11 a.m. If you can't make those other times. Good. Thank you, John. Uh, moving on to agenda item number 15, which are minutes. Move the minutes of June 23rd, 2009, and October 5th, 2010. Second. Seconded by Second. Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And now we move into agenda item number 16, which means, folks, we're going into executive session. It's labor negotiations, and they're negotiations that if we were to discuss in open uh, meeting, it would have a detrimental effect. So I'm going to have to have a roll call vote. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Norton? Yes. Mr. Yes. Good night, folks. Thank you very much.